And we now want to have some speeches from our partners, the people who are making this possible, the people who are helping us connect schools for collaboration and less of competition. This is one way we would like to cover the gap, reduce the gap between the urban and rural schools. And I'm sure at one point we'll have a thousand schools connected to one screen and learning together. So in our next phase, I would like to um, um, the representative of Renew, uh, who is going to speak to us, why are they doing this? Why are they connecting schools? And after that, we shall welcome um, our friends from UCC to also tell us what is their passion in all this? Why are they struggling to have the schools uh, connecting to each other? Why are they struggling to put internet in the schools? So over to you, Brian, from Renew, for your comments. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Dovu. I don't know whether you can see my video clearly, but thank you so much for organizing yes, this. I would like to start by acknowledging the organizers of this seminar, HELP and uh, UCC, the students in attendance, the teachers, the head teachers also tuning in, and uh, other, the ladies and gentlemen that have actually turned into this. So I would like to salute you for participating in this seminar. And it's very wonderful to see this. My name is Brian Masiga. I am a senior network engineer for Renu. But before I tell you a lot more about Renu, I would like to take this pleasure to thank the whole project first for taking a lead in organizing these seminars, but also for giving Renu the opportunity to work with them. Through this partnership, Renu has but got an opportunity to interact with a section of the, our end users, that is the students and staff of the secondary schools. You see, most of the time, Renu is able to interact with the head teachers and heads of departments for ICT in the schools. But being a part of this seminar gives us the opportunity to interact with the students directly, who are the prime beneficiaries of the Renu services. I am also happy to say that through this collaboration with HELP, Renu decided to boost the capacity for all our member institution schools to enable them participate seamless, seamlessly in this seminar. So with that, I would like also to take the opportunity to thank the Uganda Communications Commission who has given Renu an opportunity to partner with them in the school's connectivity project, but also for the continued support since 2013. Today, we have over 60 schools connected to the Renu network under the Renu UCC partnership with RCDF. So what about Renu? So Renu is the Research and Education Network for Uganda, Uganda's NREN, National Research and Education Network. We are not for profit organization. We also member best cooperative owned organization. That means that any school or other institution to benefit from the Renu services, they must first become members of Renu. The overall goal of RENU is to ensure ICT-enabled ICT collaboration to improve the quality of education and research in Uganda. Digital collaboration runs on an underlining solid network, which RENU has spent a lot of effort on. And this is really to allow the member institutions that ranges from the universities to the research institutions to the schools now to have a reliable network to collaborate with one another. You stay the same, but if you want to go far, then you work in collaboration. But if you just want to win a battle, then you work in isolation. So I believe that now that the schools are collaborating with one another, we shall go very far. I would like to also clarify that despite offering connectivity, that is the internet service, we are not an internet service provider. Rather, we are a connect, we rather call it connectivity services because what we are trying to reach is quality education and research in Uganda. It is such things like virtual seminars, shared lectures, video conferences, and are the major reason why REN was established in the first place. To equalize education standards, irrespective of the location of the university of the school in Uganda. So we offer other services uh, ranging from web hosting to cloud services, to data center services, 
to Moodle e-learning services, to Edurome, to anti-plagiarism, and many others. But the one that we have been testing with the PIT Help team is one of a video conferencing solution that allows us to join without having to spend our data bundles. So meaning the schools that are not yet connected to the Renault network, we have solutions for you as you prepare to connect to Renault. We have come up with a video conferencing solution that is zero rated on MTN for now, as we keep on working with the other telcos like Airtel, so that you're able to join into these virtual seminars without having to pay data bundles and struggling to join them. So I would like to conclude by saying that we have more services. Please visit our website. Please follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram. We remain here to serve the schools, the universities, and the research institutions. And that's why we're here. So I'll continue listening in. Please enjoy the rest of the sessions. And thank you so much, Mr. Dungu and the PIT Help Team. May God bless you. Thank you, Renew, and thank you, Brand, for the wonderful words. We are happy to continue working with you, and we hope many more schools will come on board so that we have a thousand plus schools. Now moving on to UCC, I'm not sure who is speaking on behalf of UCC. Ayub, could you guide me who is there? Is Honorable Nyombi Tembo there? Let's. Uh... I, I Hello. We give it. We give it for them to choose. Hello. A very good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, speaking to you is uh, Ibrahim Bosa, the head of public and international relations at the Uganda Communications Commission. I am hoping that I am uh, loud and clear. We are not seeing you, Mr. Bosa. Is that I'm intended? Not, uh, okay. okay. Let Let us. Let me make some adjustments here. And how is that? Yes, perfect, perfect, perfect. Excellent. Uh, I think to the Holistic e-learning project partners, uh, the project implementation team, uh, Research Education Network Uganda, uh, of course, who are providing the internet connectivity to the participating schools on uh, this project. Uh, the piloting schools, especially, that is uh, Gayaza, St. Mary's, Kisubi, Nabisunsa, and uh, Mwiri, Busoka College, and also all the other participating schools, teachers and students, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I speak to you from the Uganda Communications Commission, and it is a pleasure. And uh, I bring greetings from the entire team of the Uganda Communications Universal Service and Access Fund that many of you previously knew as the Rural Communication Development Fund that is supporting this project. Allow me to begin by thanking uh, Mr. Kalema Golova Ayub, Mr. Ronald Dungu, Mr. Arthur Mbalude, Mr. Daniel Kakinda, and uh, Mr. Alan Kakinda, uh, who are the education experts on this project. Because uh, personally, I witnessed the launch of this project and I can now appreciate the process and progress that has come this far. It is really formidable. We will realize that uh, until COVID-19 disrupted the formal education. Until COVID-19 disrupted the formal education system and of course every other aspect of our lives, we know that the the, the, the pandemic has stimulated demand for digital services. And we have many people around the world that are basically now working in virtual uh, uh, environments to be able to interact. And today we can appreciate that this project is more relevant to us, especially in the education system, uh, more than before. We realize that this seminar would have been held probably in uh, an auditorium with hundreds of people packed together, but we are able to share and uh, learn from each other in virtual networks. And we think that this is probably the new standard that we should be looking at in education system. Now, the idea that students uh, can conduct a seminar online was really unthinkable many years ago. Personally, I think I was in my 
in my A level in 1994, 95. And I will tell you that uh, it would be a dream to imagine that a cinema, a, a, a seminar like this would be conducted in a virtual environment. However, we should also recognize that we still have schools in the rural areas in Uganda, in especially what we refer to as underserved areas of this country, who have not yet been able to access this kind of opportunity and or privilege. And that is where the Uganda Communications Commission under the Uganda Communication Universal Service and Access Fund comes in to assist the country to improve universal access in the usage of ICTs. So the e-learning or the holistic e-learning project is one of many projects that the Uganda Communications Commission uh, uses uh, to be able to enhance collaboration and improve knowledge sharing, improves access and usage of ICTs among stakeholders. Those of you who may not be familiar with the Uganda Communications Commission in many of our other undertakings, many of you I think know us as a regulator of the communication sector of which we are, but we also have a mandate to coordinate the sustainable development of ICT services in this country. And some of the projects that I would just want to highlight for uh, our students and teachers to be aware or can look out for because this information is uh, available to understand that we don't only regulate, but are your partners in growth and development. Take for instance, we have undertaken the rural broadband sites installation where we have installed 22 3G sites in underserved areas. So many of you know that telecom companies are the ones who build base towers, right? But the Uganda Communications Commission under the Universal Access Fund has also provided connectivity in terms of base stations to underserved areas. We have given ICT laboratories to schools. Over 1,000 government-aided schools have gotten ICT laboratories. Those who cannot be able first to afford, but also to give them an opportunity to be able to uh, network with schools around them. And this has been a very successful uh, project. We have provided virtual science content to over 600 schools, whereby schools who cannot afford the brick and mortar laboratories to do experiments in physics, in biology, are actually doing them on computers. And they are gaining the same education, same level of quality as somebody who has a, a, a physical laboratory. And we think that this is the beauty of technology. We have undertaken programs to retool your teachers in ICT to make sure that ICTs as they are taught in school, the updated formats and, and trends in ICT can be taught to students today. We are educating communities around the schools that we have given laboratories to be able to use ICTs in their everyday life. We are dealing with uh, businesses, small, small and medium sized businesses, people to be able to use ICTs in the Juwakari type of business. If you are a farmer, if you're a plumber, if you are a, a furniture maker, how are you able to take stock, make records and be able to uh, surf the website and look for prices and even sell your products. We have undertaken public ICT access at post offices and libraries to help communities that are served by these uh, post offices to have access to the internet. We are financing research. So ladies and gentlemen, I basically am showing you the bigger picture of what we do as part of our initiatives to be able to collaborate, to be able to share information, but also to allow access and usage of ICTs. However, we are also alive to the fact that communication service providers today are challenged in the rising, um, the ever increasing demand for data and providing affordable, affordable packages for people who are studying at home, working at home, or even conducting meetings and seminars like this. While you may have Renew providing this service for you, other people who would have to do the same seminar would have to do it at a considerable cost because of the cost of data. But as a regulator and stakeholders in this sector, we are putting our heads together to find market-driven solutions to find that people are able to afford uh, the costs of connectivity. So 
It is not that we do not know about the challenge. It is not an, a Ugandan ca challenge. It is a challenge oh, for the whole of Africa and especially landlocked countries like us. But I, I want to assure you that these are issues that preoccupy us as a regulator. On the other hand, we must also not forget the downside of the rapid internet penetration and usage. For example, we must prepare ourselves as users, as students, as children, as parents, as guardians, to deal with the increased cyber security risks that come with using the internet. We must support and protect young people, young users, and support ourselves to be able to face challenges like cyberbullying and the risk of addiction. These are real issues today, and these probably require us to engage in more candid discussions, more education, and also creating awareness on the same. On our part, as the regulator of the communication sector, we will continue to play our role as a facilitator and an enabler of the development of the ICT sector or a robust communication sector in this country. And to ensure that we can achieve our vision to create a digitally inclusive economy. In that regard, the Uganda Communications Commission is privileged to work with stakeholders of high repute, like the Project Implementation Team, Research and Education Network Uganda. And we think that through these interventions, like these seminars, we can go a long way to increase the usage, but also access of ICTs, and especially in the education sector. We know that such products help us to boost the quality of teaching and learning, and also contribute to the attainment of the sustainable development goals. If some of you are familiar with the SDG4, which is about ensuring inclusive, equitable, quality education and promoting lifelong learning opportunities for all. I therefore call upon uh, all the other schools that have not taken yet part in this project to be able to cultivate a solid and systematic collaboration with the holistic e-learning project so that it can become a national standard for Uganda. So from the Uganda Communications Commission, I remain Ibrahim Bossa and thank you very much. And I wish you the best. Thank you, UCC and Renew, and there are no better partners than you who try to connect schools and increase on the collaboration across our schools.